Uh, my name is Sihan Huan. Uh, today I will uh, re report my research progress about the influence of the nano silica on the interface of concrete layers on the interface. So here is the uh, content of my today's presentation. I will start with the motivation of this study and then some objective. And I will move on to the result of this research. And by the end of the presentation, I will have a quick conclusion. So, as we all know that in the modern construction, the uh, interface of concrete layer is commonly observed. For example, the concrete uh, patching, the rehabilitation of concrete pavement. So they all create uh, interface between concrete layers. And it, we know that um, the concrete layers can be porous and vulnerable to external damages such as cyclic loading, such as uh, environment and also the chemical attack. So we, we, we thought that it would be great if we can find a method to uh, easily apply to our concrete materials and efficiently improve the quality of the interface. So maybe we can elongate the service life, the lifespan of the concrete materials. So, um, so we try to find a method and before, when we do that, we uh, review our previous research and we we noticed that in our previous study, we used uh, nano silicate in our cementitious composite and uh, efficiently improved the mechanical strength, such as the compression, flexural, and tensile strength. So, and also we, uh, apart from the mechanical properties of the uh, cementitious material, we also test the self-healing performance. So as you can see in these uh, photos here under the microscope, some of the cracks can self-heal after a couple cycle of the uh, wet-dry conditioning with very limited water supply. So the mechanism here was uh, very simple and straightforward. That was the continuous hydration and the pozzolanic reaction of the cementitious material. And we, when we do this set of the tests, we uh, observe an improvement in the self-healing uh, performance of the cementitious composite with the incorporation of the nail silica. So some more photos showing here that with the incorporation of the nanomaterial, we kind of, some of the crack can self-heal, completely self-closed after within 28 days. So we observe a very significant uh, inf uh, effect efficiency when we have nanosilica in the cementitious composite. And here is all, here all the results are based on the observation uh, under the microscope. We also have the mechanical test to see if we have self-close uh, self of the crest, how about the self-healing, the regaining of the strength. So we also observe this kind of increase of the tensile strength retention ratio with the increasing dosage of the nano silica. So in this case, the self-healing was not only based on observation, but also uh, it reflects on the mechanical performance. And based on that, we have our findings that we have when we have nano silica in the cementitious material we will have a higher reactivity of the, <coughs> of the component which due to the pozzolani reaction of the nano silica and we also found out that adding the nano silica can kind of change the workability and rheology in this case we can optimize the, uh, the mixture by adjusting the, nano, the dosage of the nano silica and last but not least, another interesting finding was that when we, we, we've noticed when we have the nano silica in the con concrete mixture, um, we kind of increase the water retention ability of the concrete mix. So that means we have less water evaporation, and also we notice there the, the mixture seems to be able to grab the water, to hold the water, and the entire mixture is very consistent. And they may also help to develop a better concrete mixture. So based on that, we ask ourselves, if it works for mechanical properties, it works for self-healing, and it has a better hydration, better chemical reaction, how about the interface? So that's why we have this uh, set of the test. Um, the objective is to evaluate the, the nanosilicate inference on the neutral concrete interface. And we ask ourselves two questions. One is a very basic one. How does the bonding strength change? And the other one is, well, is very interesting and exciting, which is if we use this liquid 
phase nanosilica as a surface agent. We just spread it on the surface of the old concrete layers, and then we pour the new one, the new fresh concrete. How does the interface will be changed? So based on these two questions, we started our own our research, and here is the result. Um, so before I go into the detail of the data, I would like to uh, point out that for the surface method of the nanosilica, we spread the liquid or nanosilica on top of the old concrete layers, and the usage of the nanosilica was actually lower than my 0.3% nanosilica. Of course, this kind of method and the dosage also depends on the geometry size of our samples, but in my case, uh, the surface method actually use very little amount of the nanosilica. Okay, so if we look at the result, incorporation of the nanosilica improved the bind bonding strength between the two concrete layers, the new and old concrete layers. And also, uh, this, is, this improvement is can be observed in both of the methods, the surface method and the direct adding method. And we believe that um, when we have nanosilica, we have protoline reaction, we have nanosilicon, nanosilicon, nano effect. They all contribute to the development of the higher strengths. Um, as for the surface method, we believe that um, when we have very high concentration of the nanosilica on the cold concrete layers, the nanosilica can precipitate, and well, just because of the high concentration, the precipitation of the nanosilica part particle can also create this frictional force under this kind of compression, actually the sharing between two interfaces. And also this process contribute and give a higher uh, bonding strength than the reference sample. So now we have the mechanical test result in terms of the bonding strength. We move on to the to some durability test. For example, we designed these double layers concrete samples to test the Rapid chloride penetration test. We have the old layer, we have a new layer, and we want to see how the interface changes. So under the uh, under this RCTT testing, we noticed the charge passed through the sample was decreased if we have nanosilica in the sample. So that means we have less chloride ions penetrated. Um, so in this case, we believe that if we have nanosilica in the concrete sample, we can have a better chloride resistance, especially in the interface. And in this case, we observe the surface method perform even better than the direct adding method. We believe that not only this was due to the, you know, the precipitation of the nanosilica, so it kind of create this denser and more compact interface between the copy layers and block the penetration of the chloride ions. All right, so uh, we have the mechanical test, we have the durability test. We want to visualize, or the visualize the sample, visualize the interface. That's why we have the uh, we, we have the micro CT scanning for our sample. As you can see on the right, we have again this is double layer sample, but in this case it's mortar sample without any aggregates, just sand and cement. And we scan the sample, we model, and create 3D image of the of the sample. Here is the result of the reference sample. So as you can see, we can clearly observe this interface in between the sample. And this interface was uh, believed to be porous and dense in the reference sample. So you can uh, on the right is I extract the interface out of the get rid of other pores and. On the right is the interface. And we can also observe this kind of uh, interface in another direction, uh, slide, slide by slice of the sample. And I highlight the interface by the yellow colors. So we can observe a certain increase in the porosity when we reach the region of the interface. The, the, the porosity suddenly increases and then get back to the normal. Um, so I will move to the 0.3% nanosilica. I think this one was much better. Um, so as you can see over there, even though you can observe a difference between porosity from the top layer and the bottom layer, actually that was designed to be that because we want to have a different uh, porosity in the two layers so that we can know where the interface is. And in our sample for the 0.3% nanosilica, you can barely observe the interface. We only observe some 
just a couple of large voids in the interface. And I can I'm not able I was not able to extract the interface out of the voids and unlike the reference. So I would say the interface was greatly improved. And also in another direction, as you can see, uh, no significant change in the porosity when we reach the interface region. I think the quality was much uh, significantly improved. Okay, so for the 0.6% nanosilica, we continue to increase the dosage. I think this one was not as good as the 0.3% nanosilica, but still it's better than the reference. Um, we extract the interface out of it. It's much thinner, and I think it's more consistent with uh, smaller pore size. And again, if we look at an, another direction, I think, so for the both of the 0.3 and 0.6% nanosilica, they all create this better interface than the reference sample. So based on that, we believe we have, uh, we can achieve a denser and stronger interface using a nanosilica. Uh, because basically it's, those mechanisms are very straightforward, just a quaternion reaction, and you know, stealing, and you know, stealing, feeling effect. And actually we also have some other observation, which I will introduce in the following slides. Um, apart from the micro CT scanning, we also did the optical microscope observation. So this is the reference sample, multi-reference sample. As you can see, there is an interface in between the two layers. And if we look closer, there are whitish product, which we believe to be the uh, precipitation of the calcium hydroxide, which is the byproduct of the cement hydration. Uh, this is what we expected, actually. But if we look at the 0.6%, we have the nanosilica. I think the interface was much better, much denser, and the quality is much better than the reference sample. And if um, using a similar technology, if we move on to the uh, scanning electron microscope, we can also observe the interface in kind of different way. Um, as you can see, if we, uh, the, the picture A is the reference, B is the 0.3%, and C is 0.6%, and the last one, picture D, is the surface method. So, in all these four different samples, I think 0.6% nanosilica provides a better interface under the scanning electron microscope. Um, if we look at the interface under the higher magnification, we can observe this kind of segregation of the cement particles. And I think this segregation might be due to a, a slight change in the walkability, flowability, close to the interface region. And we have done some uh, water retention testing site briefly introduced uh, earlier. Um, the adding of the nanosilica improved the water retention ability. So it makes the entire mixture more uniform and it grabs the water, prevent the water from getting out, for example, evaporation. Or, um, so I think this kind of improvement prevent the excessive segregation, especially nearby the interface region. And that's why we, uh, for the sample with nanosilica, we didn't observe any segregation of the particles. And I think that's one of the reasons why we have a better interface, a better bonding strength, a better uh, durability result. Okay. So, if we, um, so if we look at the 0.3% nanosilica, under the, optical, under the uh, SEA image, we can observe a, a gap in the interface. However, we can also observe the hydration product in between. So therefore, we believe that if we, uh, for the sample with nanosilica, the interface quality will get even better at a later age because of the potential to the reaction of the nanosilica particles. And if we look at the 0.6%, it's much better in this case, but for the surface matter on the the picture E. Um, the interface was relatively compact, but interesting to find that there is a wide region, which is like a transition region in the interface. Like this region was much wider than the other sample. So we believe that this is a weak zone, which uh, kind of includes the photodyne reaction product and also the precipitation of the nanosilica because of the high dosage, high concentration. 
Okay, so some more folk, some more SEM images about the surface matter. We can observe this kind of uh, phenomenon in the sample in the interface region of the surface matter. This kind of transition zoom can be found everywhere. So we believe that this was kind of the precipitation and the protein reaction. So here is a quick discussion about what we found based on the previous study, a previous result. For the reference sample, we, we observed the CH, the calcium hydroxide precipitation. But we believe that this kind of crystal is weak and doesn't contribute too much to the strength development. Of course, a little bit, but it's not as strong as CSH2L. And if we look at the 0.3% nanosilica, the optical microscope is here, we didn't observe any YH calcium hydroxide uh, precipitate. So we believe that this was due to the consumption of the CH uh, by the nanosilica due to the pozzolanic reaction. So basically, the idea here was that um, the nanosilica can replace the weak CH and transfer that to the strong CSH here. So that's why when we have nanosilica in the concrete, in the, in the sample, we have a stronger bonding strength, we have a more compact interface. So on the left is a TGA result. We kind of evaluate the influence of the nanosilica on the CH concerns. So that kind of verify our uh, theories. And another one, and, uh, here is another set of the uh, image about the 0.6% nanosilica. So again, as you can observe, the interface was very compact and very dense. So we believe that with a higher dosage of the nanosilica, we can have more C more positive reaction, more CSH gel, and it not only fill the gap, but also <coughs> develop a higher bonding stress. So another set of the SEM image about uh, for the 0.6% sample. Okay. So here is a quick summary of my research. So the interface property can be improved by the adding of the nanosilica. And we found that the nanosilica can kind of contribute to the formation of a denser cement matrix, especially at the interface. And we believe the, the kind of the modification of the reality and workability and water retention capacity of the nanosilica can contribute to the companions of a region of the interface. For example, uh, prevent the excessive segregation of the cement particles. The last but not least, when the, when the nanosilica was used as a surface agent, the uh, precipitation of the nanosilica can kind of contribute to the uh, bonding, to a higher bonding strength, but uh, not as efficient as the direct adding method. But still, it provides an insight on the using of the liquid nano, uh, nanosilica in the concrete materials. Uh, last but not least, I would like to thank my advisor, Professor Lu, and also my lab colleagues. And of course, I also want to thank Specification Products for, for, for providing this excellent uh, liquid nanosilica, uh, EFI, internal, internal pure. Thank you very much.